budgeting for time? And we have a few minutes for each. Okay, so in five minutes, I'm going to try to explain what I do and how I got there and how cognitive science is relevant. We'll see how we do. And I will be around for lunch if I didn't answer anybody's, everybody's questions, which I most certainly will not. Um, the first question, though, I have is for you. Who here has heard of occupational therapy? Not bad. Okay, so usually, <laughs> I know that I wasn't sure if this was going to be first year, second year, but let's do another show of hands. How many people have to explain what cognitive science is on a daily basis? So that is the first thing occupational therapy and cognitive science have in common. When you have a broad, a very broad discipline or a very broad profession, you're going to be explaining what you do for the rest of your life. But good news for me, I love to. So occupational therapy helps people do meaningful activities. You can call it activity therapy, but we like the name occupation therapy. It sounds nicer. Um, we help people do things that they want to need to do. And you may be thinking, that's a lot of things. Yes, I came into CogSci because I can pick, nail down one specific thing that I wanted to do. And uh, I continue that tradition in taking my career. The three categories, trying to get a little bit of context, is that people typically uh, file occupations into our self-care, productivity, and leisure. And again, in five minutes, but I have to explain my profession. Three domains of practice that a lot of OTs go into are uh, mental health, uh, cognitive rehabilitation, and physical rehabilitation. So, on to point two. Uh, how did I get there? So, Anne was absolutely bang on. I spent two years saying, wow, that was really great. Now, what do I do? So, I... What I did is I did a load of things. I volunteered uh, a bunch of different places. I came back to school. I did an undergrad uh, thesis. But I tried to pick out the things that I liked best about cognitive science and apply them now to a more practical approach. So what really landed me here is uh, volunteering at CAMH, where I was exposed to occupational therapy and just exposed to how amazing and how much of a difference it can make in the lives of people. So to briefly explain the moment that convinced me to go to occupational therapy is when I was teaching a knitting class at KMH and a woman came up to me and said, because of you, I don't self-harm anymore. I knit. So uh, some advice for, for some of you thinking about a career, if you have a moment like that, that you keep telling to people and yourself, that is a good sign that you're in the right direction. Um, so from there, I went into the program. I graduated in August of 2017, so that's last year, and I started working as an OT um, in April. Uh, I am the first occupational therapist hired at Balance for Blind Adults, which is a nonprofit organization in the community, and I'm also uh, the first, apparently, so I hear from the people I work with, one of the only occupational therapists that work with ADHD in the GTA. So, I guess I started things off with a bang, and I'd like to attribute that, uh, at least in part, to my, the cognitive science background that I have. Because it made me not afraid to think outside the box. It made me see things from many, many different perspectives. Now, I don't think that occupational therapists as a whole would like to call ourselves multidisciplinary or multiprofessional, but the biggest strength of our profession is being able to look at these new perspectives and, and all focus them through this lens of human activity. So I can look at something like teaching math, or using the washroom, or gardening, and look at it from, to use some terminology, look at it as a dynamic system, and try to figure out what variables do we need to manipulate to give people the best success. So that brings me into sort of my last point that I wanted to make. I still truly believe that I use every course and discipline that I studied in cognitive science into my work today, whether it's looking into seeing AI to allow blind people to get information from the environment to help with, you know, another word for that, extended mind. Um, linguistics, I will say, I only took Blue 100, but <laughs> communication is really, really important and being able to modify the way you explain something or understand how communication is so vital to therapy. Um, anthropology, understanding the space that I take up in our culture and where what space this client is in and how that matters for our interaction. Um, and I would go to that for English literature because you would be surprised. I use literature and, and, and um, reading as a way of picking up themes to help someone with a 
cognitive impairment organize their space. So that's the interdisciplinary lens. I hope I've sort of given you a very brief overview of what I do in occupational therapy. And if anyone has any questions or is interested, please feel free to speak, speak to me at any time.